Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. Uh, so since the last episode, it has been a little bit of time. You'll notice that my uh, mana has actually jumped up, and you'll notice I've actually gotten a few glyphs out of the way. Uh, Apparition was nice enough to hook us up with a sponge and dragon's breath. Because uh, I was going to go out maybe and look for those, but uh, they had some spares and hooked us up that way i can make some linger spells because i just i like linger spells you know and i have been playing with spells actually zerani and i were down in the mines uh, and i'll show you because i was down there mining uh with my new r spells and then zerani jumped in and was doing some mining too and then discovered that the want of symmetry works for like super mining uh, so that's something we're gonna have to try out a bit later on but uh, I did make a couple linker spells here. This one is Affliction. Uh, so, <laughs> it just does massive damage. Uh, we'll actually be able to see our DPS here in a minute. Because this pack, luckily, has the mm-mm-mm-mm. mm mm, -mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm, -mm. Yeah, that's it. Mod. Um, so, we do have the target dummy so we can see our DPS. But the Wither Effect lasts for a little bit. It does take a lot of mana, but it... <laughs> It does a whole lot of damage. Uh, of course, these spells, i got to be careful not to get caught in them. Uh, because the linger... I've got it creating a pretty big field. This is like AoE mob clear. Uh, but you can see 8.29 DPS. And I mean, it could, we could make it higher if we were like consistently casting. Uh, as this came off of cooldown. But uh, This spell, you can see it's a projectile linger. Extend time snare. So the enemies can't move out of it. And then hex amplified 3. Wither Amplified 3 and Harm Amplified 3. Uh, so as long as the Linger effect is up, it's dealing damage, which is of course augmented to be boosted because they're affected by Wither. Um, and it's like Wither 3, Hex 3 or something like that, Hex 4 or something. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Now, an even more dangerous spell is my Cloudbreaker spell, <laughs> which is another Linger spell. But this one, it actually doesn't show the DPS, but you can see it's dealing 62 damage, like a lot of 62 damages. I've actually, if you take a look at my deaths, I have 11 deaths. I've actually killed myself twice with a spell and accident. Cast it too close to myself and just instantly died. Well, this one is a projectile linger, extend time, extend time, snare, lightning, amplify three, four times. Really, really big damage and they can't move out of it. Um, actually, as soon as I get pulled into it, I'm almost dead, and then within about a split... I mean, it's faster than I can do anything, like, to try to escape it, so... Uh, and then we have the Kami Ha, which is, uh, projectile harm amplify three up to here, and then it just a couple amplifies, because it takes a lot of mana. Uh, but you could say it does 125 damage, so it's a big, just boom, single shot to the face kind of attack. Uh, also, I did get the Silver Nail unlocked, so we deal 10% more damage to our enemies. So, And, of course, that works with our with our spells. So, uh, But if you want to take a look... Uh, oh, and I did make an Assembly Halo so that we can craft. And that way we'll be able to save recipes onto this. And, yeah, I was making another flywheel, but... That way we'll be able to save recipes to this. And uh, we can also craft, instead of using a spell slot in our book uh we can craft with that instead and then i think oh yeah i actually don't have my one thing on here right now i'm going to be setting it back up but i'm still in the process of switching up some spells but you'll notice that i actually have 57 nebu ore and i have a whole bunch of relic ore uh but i want to show you guys my method now for mining nebu because it's wonderful we have now reached the point where it is way more efficient to mine with ours uh, than it is to mine with vein miner. So, um, and actually, if we pop down, this is my quarry hole. One of my one of my quarry holes, anyways. All right, now right back here, you're gonna notice this huge cavern. And if we keep going a ways. This is my amazing mining skills here. This thing is a lot longer than I remembered it being. Yeah, this is when we hit lava, which we can't... We don't really die from lava anymore. Like, lava's not scary at all. Oh, and then I think... 
I don't know where our boom tunnels were. Yeah, I don't remember, but... Anyways, what I've been doing is I've been using the void, the jar of voiding that they gave us from the quest. Uh, so we're going to set this to active, and I've got it set to void limestone. Um, and then what I'll do is, for example, we'll start off with the boom spell. This boom spell is projectile explosion extract, so it doesn't break blocks uh, once they're dropped as items, and then it's AoE. So we can just do that. Oh, and uh, oh yeah, I think I've got it in here. Yeah, I made a ring of magnetization. And that way it absorbs all of the limestone for us. And we can basically just bust through. Yeah. Which actually I need to add. Really when I'm using this I need to add. Uh, crack limestone to it. And that way it can produce mana from these as well. Uh, basically the items that are listed here. It just absorbs them. And turns them into a small amount of mana. Now. Honestly, what I prefer to have, though, uh, which I'm going to switch this out. We're going to have big mining spell. And what we're going to do is switch the explosion with a break spell. So it's going to be projectile break extract and then just lots of AoEs. And this is the spell that I prefer for mining because it's a lot more mana efficient. Oh, there's Nebu. Oh, there's a bunch of Nebu. Oh, there's nine Nebu. I love those deposits like that. But with this spell, this is how I mine for like Nebu and Relic Ore and stuff like that. It's just going through. You can see with the jar avoiding with our mana where it's at and everything, uh, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really touch our mana at this point. But yeah, so now we can do really, really big mining. Oh, and I wanted to show you, I did get our third blitz over here so it does kind of speed up crafting uh but currently we have 357 arcane stone in there uh, so we're good in terms of that and also over here i did automate silk moths uh we got 58 seems like this one's just hanging out inside the hopper at some point it'll fly up and go into the spike so basically we just have our silk moth nest there and there uh, and then they just kind of fly into these bamboo spikes and then hoppers collect the items so may change out the hoppers a little bit later uh, for something that's a little bit, uh, a little bit more performance friendly, but I don't think three hoppers will hurt too bad. So that one will eventually make its way in. But all right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna switch this back over to a break spell, full on fortune, uh, and we are going to. And let me see, how much does big fortune do? I need to get my wand out for this, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it takes so much mana. It's gonna take me a little bit to break through all this. Uh, even without the wand. But I figured this would be the easiest way for us to try and see if we can get... Uh, first up, the very last item that we need to wash, which is the Emerald Idol. And then also see if we can get uh, Relics to drop Fortuned. Now later on, once we have a bit more source generation, I'd like to have this done through a mana turret, a spell turret. But at the moment, um, I know it's going to take a lot of source to do that, and I just don't think we have the source uh, to do that. Plus, we are just missing that one washed idol, and I'm really hoping that we can get it. There we go. We got Power Washer, Emerald Idol. I wonder if Tyler is AFK right now, because we were both uh, we were talking about it, both of us missing the Emerald Idol. But I think he was missing a couple others as well, so... And it means that we can slot our very last idol. Look at that. We have all the different stuff from washing at this point. Uh, which isn't like, it's not like super important or anything like that. But it's just something to collect. And I was wanting to farm up a lot of Nebu. Because I'm going to be setting everything up in Nebu display cases. So I need like, I need about 100 Nebu display cases. Which is going to be about 200 ingots. But luckily at this point, getting a whole bunch of Nebu, it's not really a big deal for us. So, But here pretty soon we're going to be pushing on to uh, Archmage robes, and then soon after that specialty robes uh, that are going to have Mana Boost, that'll have Mana Boost 5 and Mana Region 5. But I will probably end up seeing if we can level up a Curator Villager uh, to see if we can buy the Nebu uh, display cases. And if we can, then that'll save us a little bit in terms of, uh, like, Nebu ore. 
But I think once we push into like the specialty robes from uh, the R's Arsenal, then and then once we get the Mana Boost 3 and the Mana Regen 3, because I'm going to be going with probably Geomancer robes for like our more general purpose stuff, and uh, we'll be able to probably fortune through a lot of ore pretty quickly. But let's go ahead, let's see if we can get maybe this thing to proc a fortune relic. Because if so, that would be extremely nice. And we still haven't... Oh, there we go. Okay. So it does not increase the relics that you do get when it procs. Um, but you can still get relics. Like, we got coins as the fortuned item, it seems like. And then we got the inputs grounding. So, which I think I already have that one. All right. And this other flywheel, we're basically going to set it up. I haven't set up all the pipes just yet to it, uh, to the furnace. Uh, this one, I'm just using a limestone furnace. Uh, you know, because it's the same. It's just going to smelt glass a bit slower than this one, which is fine. Uh, but I went ahead and set this one up basically adjacent. And then I've got this running out the back. Uh, so if we take a look here, you can see it goes into a shaft, into a large cog, small cog, and then comes right up and attaches to this. It's not going to affect the speed or anything like that. Uh, but what it is going to do is it is going to, with both of them running, it's going to give us 32,768 stress units. And that way we can add on some additional stuff to this because today we're actually going to start kind of a big automation project that's going to be a culmination of bees automating various things from Create uh, to make our lives a lot easier. We're going to get automatic wood. We're going to get automatic plates. We're going to get automatic dusts you know, for alloys and things like that, just on demand. And we're also going to be adding on an additional system for from our meal so that we can process things like coal, redstone, uh, because of course those don't get compacted. Uh, so we're going to be adding that on. Uh, it may span two episodes, we'll see. And this setup's big enough, I'm kind of like, uh, where do I want to start? <laughs> but I think the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our tunnels uh, for the crushing system, because right now, the only thing that we actually handle coming out of the crushing system is the nuggets. If we have anything else, it's going to cause issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a tunnel system right here. And I went ahead and ran a conveyor over that just basically plugs into the input chest that's over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up some filters. And we'll set these both up real quick here. Uh, we're going to say, which right now it's sending... Oh, no. Let me disconnect that. It's pulling the glass. Of course, the glass has nowhere to go. Which this this pipe, I ran this up. This is for something a little bit lighter. Um, I think it's going to go here. It might get moved. But but let's see. We're going to filter nuggets. And we're going to say uh, it's going to be just forge nuggets. And we're going to say add attribute to list on both of these. So both of these should be configured. Uh, for nuggets. Now let's go ahead and split these off and we're going to say uh, deny list on this one. And this one's going to go right here. And then this one is going to be the allow list any. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that on. And so now if nuggets come through, you know, for example, they come through this, they're going to shoot off and go on uh, this filter right here uh, right now it's allowing nuggets which I don't have any crushed ore that needs to be washed over here so let me just pop over I mean really most of what's going to be coming through here is still going to be crushed but there is that chance for like netherrack and maybe I'm going to be running some other stuff through these crushers so I just want to make it um, I want to make sure it's not just looking at nuggets in particular because for example redstone wouldn't go through there if it was washed uh, so what we're going to do, let's just delete that. Let's add that in and we're going to say can be washed and we'll go ahead and add that attribute and we're going to say this is going to be the deny list uh, for this now instead of just allowing nuggets through. So let's go ahead and just switch that. Uh, so now, for example, if something weird ends up on here, for example, dried kelp, you can see it goes on and it. I saw it for a split second in this chest, but it's already been pulled out. Uh, and sent on. And then if instead, say, crushed gold went on, this will get washed and it should go, should all go up that side. Yeah, there we go. 
All of it got washed and sent in, and this this conveyor still fades onto this and goes into the chest. Okay, so that stuff's that stuff has changed over now. And just so we can go ahead and get this out of our inventory, let's go ahead and set up the other mixer here. Uh, how are we doing on stress units? We're doing great on stress units. Okay. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put this basin in right here. And this one is actually going to have a blaze burner underneath it. So uh, this one's not. This is going to be mainly for making like andesite alloy and stuff that doesn't have to be heated. All right. Now at this point, we're going to set up our very first sequenced assembly system. Uh, and we're going to be going right up here. We're just going to put in our deployers there. I think... Yeah, that should be good. And then a deployer here. Because today we're going to need to make some dielectric paste. Uh, and to do this, we are going to... Or no, I'm sorry, not the dielectric paste. We're going to be doing uh, this right here, the sequence assembly to make the circuit back planes. Now, long term, we won't necessarily need this for that. But we're going to have to get into pneumatic route before we can kind of bypass that. So... Uh, for right now, we're going to be using some sequence assembly. And this one's pretty simple. We will be setting up some bigger sequence assembly fairly soon. Uh, but for right now, this will be good for us. So, And for this, what does it take to make a weighted ejector? That's not bad. This will just make our lives a bit easier. So there is our weighted ejector. Okay. And I've got to say if... Let me actually run this out like one more block. Or, uh, let's go two more blocks just to be on the safe side and I'm also going to allow I'm going to change this filter up to allow anything that's not cobblestone uh, to kind of come through here because the only thing I really don't want is the cobblestone I don't care to have the cobblestone from this system coming in but let's go ahead and let's run mechanical belt out now I don't know I think the, ang the weighted ejector might be able to clear this if not I'll have to Maybe change this up just a little bit. Uh, but if we put the weighted... I'm sorry, not right there. We're going to shift right click with the weighted ejector there. And then we're going to place the weighted ejector down. Uh, so whenever it gets those items, it'll be able to springboard them back over to here. Um, and we're going to set up a basically a filter for this in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead now. Then then we'll go ahead... Just connect that up. I don't think I want to run that straight across. Because I kind of want this to be open so that we can walk through it. You know? Uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll run it. Because I'm going to have mechanical belts ran through here. So I'm just going to run this back. Yeah, I'll have another mechanical belt here. And there. So I'm going to have to run it basically to here and then change it. I think probably the easiest route is going to be just gearbox it. And we're going to have to double gearbox it to get this rolling in the right direction. Yeah, actually, I can just look there and see that it's going to it's gonna collide with that. I mean, I could run it out further to change the angle. But it's not really ideal. Now, I don't think the weighted ejector is going to work out that great here. So let's go ahead and break that down and we'll just do something a little bit different. That'll be fine. Uh, but let's go ahead at this point, get ourselves a couple brass funnels. And for right now, we're just going to have this feed into a chest uh, once it's done. But we will end up changing that up a little bit. But we're just going to put a depot in right here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to use pipes to bring the item from the depot over to here. And we'll go ahead and clip off these connections and then we'll say that you're going to be a low extraction high speed and then right here we're going to put in a chest setting right here this is going to collect the outputs from this line and we're just going to put a brass funnel in right there uh, with the arrow pointing in towards the chest so uh, and then we're going to be setting up a filter for that uh, for right now, though, we're just going to put, like, electron tube into the allow list. Uh, because to actually make the... Let's take a look at the centrifuge, because this is what I'm working towards first. Because uh, this is going to kind of kick off everything else. Uh, we're going to need dielectric paste before we can actually do this. 
So now let's move over to the dielectric to paste. It's a little bit of a process because silicon's easy, sand is easy, but we are going to need tar for this. Okay, and tar is a little bit of a process. A uh, couple different routes to go about getting this. But most importantly, we're going to have to set up for blaze cakes. All right, now at this point, we need to get our corporea network linked all the way over to there. Now, right now, I'm just going to be using dud chest for the time being and just taking the shortest route possible. Uh, but then long term, we will change this. You know, it's going to kind of our corporea network is going to kind of naturally expand. But right now, I just need to get it all the way over there as quickly as possible. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to set up. That's connecting. That's great. So then let's come over. That's connecting. We're almost there. Now we're running it. Technically, we're running it through the middle, which isn't chunk loaded, but I'm not that worried about what's chunk loaded. The only reason I've even bothered chunk loading my base right now is because if I'm on that end, this end doesn't run if I don't chunk load it. So I've just got it uh, chunk loaded basically for when I'm actively playing now, long term, we will make sure that everything's chunk loaded a little bit more, but at the moment, this should be fine. Okay, so now if we put that there, that connects. So basically we have this long line of corporeal sparks that do finally connect all the way over. So now what we're going to do, uh, the eggs and the sugar, I'll just be feeding in uh, to the system manually for the time being long term we'll have those automatic uh, but my chickens are way over there i'll have some over here for our purposes and we'll be producing sugar just from running honeycombs but if we take a look at the blaze cake it also requires cinder flour which requires netherrack so what we're going to do for this is we're going to get ourselves our very first corporea funnel and of course, the corporeal funnel is going to try to insert into any inventory below it or two blocks below it. And if not, it's just going to throw its item on top of itself. Uh, what we're going to be doing is setting up our corporeal funnel setting right here. No, nope. can I put it here? I can. That's perfect. Yeah, because that redstone's not going to transfer through. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put an item frame on this and we're going to have it setting, say, right here. And we're going to put netherrack into this. Uh, and then we're going to put a corporeal spark onto the corporeal funnel. And if we take a look here, does this connect? It should be close enough. If it doesn't, that's fine. No, it doesn't. That's fine. I'm going to have to um, actually make some more corporeal sparks, though. Six sparks, bottled ghost, ectoplasm where I've got so many of these things. I'll be able to get a ton of them back though once we do get our very first drawer controller. So it's not really a big deal. But for now, I'll just have to craft some. I'm actually going to go ahead and lock that recipe in because I know I'm going to be making more corporeal sparks. And let me grab my key at this point because we're going to be setting up our very first drawer over here that's not connected up to our main system. Honestly, we'll have it, I think we'll have it be right here. Go ahead and just lock that in. We are going to put a corporeal spark onto that. Now this one should, I do imagine it should connect to, there we go. It connects over to that. Okay, now at this point, what we can do is our netherrack that we slotted in here, based on the rotation, it's going to increase the amount of items that are requested through the corporeal funnel when it receives redstone. So as it stands right now, it's only going to request one item. If we rotate the us, it will not let me. There we go. Have to hold shift. Uh, this would request two items. This would request four items. I think I'm going to have it request eight, 16. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a pipe that comes out right here before we start requesting. I'm going to have a pipe that comes out right here. I'm going to break that off. And then we're going to have a pipeline that comes up here. We're going to break that off. And then a pipeline that comes up here. Then we'll go ahead and just run this down. Because this is going to connect up to the main line. So we'll have this come out and just kind of go across. Oh, and let me break off this connection there. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is if we hit this with redstone, which I'm going to have to slot the, the cinder here momentarily. But if we hit this with some redstone... Oh, I actually don't have netherrack slotted in the system for some weird reason. Okay. 
I may not have a corpore. It's possible I may have missed a corporeal spark. I thought I had it over here, right? Yeah, but I don't have any in here. Okay. Since we live in basalt deltas, um, and I don't leave that area for that much, I just haven't mined a whole lot of netherrack. I had that like one piece, I guess. And we're not going to be using any corporea interceptors or anything for this system, because uh, it's not a big deal that it keeps requesting. We're actually going to have this be on like a timer system where if there's not enough cinder flower made up, you know, it's going to make it for us. Because uh, I want to make sure and keep those blaze cakes stocked. But but now if we take a look, we should have... Yeah, we have 457 nether rock in the system. Yeah, there goes the nether quartz. But I want to make sure that this saves it as an inventory. Yeah, it works over here. It may not be seeing the conveyor as a valid inventory. I think that may be the issue. Uh, so what we'll do instead is we'll have the corporea funnel on top of this chest. That should be good. And then we'll put the item frame in and the netherrack. And then we'll go ahead and put our button on. So then if we request this time, we should say, oh wait, and corporea spark. Oh, but this isn't connected anymore. Oh my gosh. Always something. Uh, in that case, I'll have to run the corporea over. Just onto one of these hoppers is fine. Uh, we'll do this one. Okay, so now if we hit the button, you can see netherrack getting processed. And then uh, I'm assuming that it's already went through and probably shot on down the line. Because I don't think cinder flower shouldn't count as something that can be washed. So chances are it's back in our overstock chest. Oh, and there's our cinder flower. It must have requested earlier and I didn't realize it. Because um, it was sending it over to my create chest. Makes sense. Because that's, that's higher priority than overstock, so... All right, so let's take that, and we're just going to go ahead and slot that into the first slot of our drawer that's over here, our cinder flower. Okay, now at this point, let's go ahead and remove this button. All right, now at this point, we're just going to tuck this down underneath here. Um, try to make, we're going to try to make sure that all of our, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tuck this just kind of underneath here, I think. Because I want to make sure that they're all accessible, just not like readily noticeable necessarily. Uh, so we're going to put in our crystal cube here. Because uh, there is a, li a limit to uh, the distance that we're going to be able to run this. You know, with the uh, wire uh, redstone link because there is a, a distance limit there. So we're going to have this come out into redstone redstone link there kind of like we did last episode uh, and then we're going to put in on this we're going to grab our cinder flower and frequency one is going to be cinder flower frequency two will be cinder flower as well and we're going to add cinder flower to this and attach our corporea spark to there and uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves an analog lever and we're going to have this be a signal strength of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 stack. Uh, let's go two stacks. Keep two stacks on hand. And then we'll just run that up into the comparator. Uh, and so then what we're going to do is... Let me actually grab this back out. And I always feel like create, I don't leave enough space. Because now I've got everything kind of jumbled. It's... Something I'm, I've tried, I, I try to work on, but uh, I'm still getting used to building with create, and so I never end up having enough space, I swear. Uh, we're going to have our redstone link be here. We'll go ahead and set this up. And then let's go ahead and switch this to receive mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up an industrial interval signal timer. Uh, because this thing is just going to be a little bit easier. 
uh, or not a little bit easier, but a little bit cheaper to set up than an hourglass. And so we're going to have this setting here. And basically it's going to send redstone to all the blocks near it, which it doesn't matter if this gets redstone. Uh, we're going to adjust the time on this. We're going to say on for one second is fine, uh, but we're going to increase the off time um, because basically I only want it to drop netherrack like once every eight seconds. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, and then we're just going to right click the center and so basically it's gonna it's gonna turn on it's gonna basically tell it to send some nether rack over uh, so if we take a look here we should say that numbers jumped to 52 and it should be consistently ordering more and more nether rack we should see it yeah there we go flies in there and basically it's going to upkeep about two stacks of cinder flower uh, within our corporea system basically within this drawer network and that's why we're putting this drawer pretty close because we want the items to kind of get sent over and so it can upkeep this stuff i think we use uh i think we use cinder flower for a few other things right we use it for the impure red chalk we're going to use it for coke brick blend okay yeah so we're going to end up needing that very very soon uh and then we can also use it to make gunpowder redstone and glowstone interesting i don't think we'll use it for those but we can so we've got three stocks and this should be this should be shutting off because basically now that the comparator is sending a signal out uh it's making the timer kind of obsolete you know so it's not pulsing the corporea funnel so we've got 192 in there uh, and it shouldn't move until we go below that two stock limit and then it'll request a, you know a little bit more Okay, so that's in place now. Now if we take a look at the blaze cake once more, we've pretty much got everything now. Um, like I said, I'm going to be kind of manually upkeeping sugar and eggs for now. Um, long term, it won't be a big deal, but for right now, uh, we will be manually requesting that. And now I'll tell you what, instead of having it shoved underneath there, let's put it here and we'll just glass this over. So that way you can see the redstone running underneath the floor. Uh, and then I'll do some kind of a border here, I think. Uh, and then I'll just do this with like smooth alabaster. And I think that'll work because we'll have a few different redstone, uh, redstone systems coming off of this. And that way we can use the same signal timer for all of these. Because 8 seconds is pretty reasonable. Uh, okay, so now if we take a look at the blaze cake base, there's no heating required for this. And it basically just needs to go into a piston and a crucible system and this system is going to be taking us to automatic lava it's just it's a big setup because <laughs> it's going to span it's going to be making a lot of things from this one setup uh, once it's all said and done now let's go ahead let's put in a mechanical belt system that's coming off of here and we're going to go ahead and make ourselves some corporea funnels all right now i'm gonna have to make some more sparks because i'm going to be making uh, three corporea funnels at this point and i don't know if it's going to be worth it because right now it might be a slight issue that might come up but long term I, it's not going to so i don't know if i want to bother running the redstone to solve it or not uh, because basically right now there's a chance that now it actually won't be an issue uh because we're, it's not like we're going to be like burning through blaze cakes it's just we'll be using them on occasion so it'll be nice to have them automated so i don't i'm not going to worry about redstone to check to see if there's enough eggs and sugar and stuff like that in the system i've got i'll have to put some more sugar in here but that's okay um i just i don't think it's worth the clutter of having it check that because long term it's stuff that we're going to have all the time you know netherrack sugar <clears throat> eggs you know uh, but on the short term, it might come up a couple times and then it might re over request and I'll have to manually empty it. It's not really a big deal. Oh, I got the broken heart fifth pace, uh, trinket. And actually out of curiosity, do these, are these actually used for anything beyond? They are not. Okay. So in that case, I might actually adjust where this is placed and have them just go straight to the spout. Because there's really not any point in turning this into like a multi-step process. 
All right, so we're just going to have something like that so the items can drop onto this, go into the basin, get pressed out to make the blaze cake, and then sent on. <clears throat> uh, which I may change this. I don't, I don't know that I like this belt here. And we're going to go ahead, put redstone in there, there. We're going to have an analog lever, of course. We're going to have our last redstone link setting here. And we're going to configure this to be, I don't know, like uh, something like cinder flower redstone. Uh, should be fine. And then we'll go ahead and configure this one over here. Cinder flower redstone on all of these. And let me actually break off that redstone for just a minute. Uh, and then let me go ahead and set all of these to receive that signal. Let's go ahead and make ourselves our spout. Yeah, I think at this point we're going to go ahead, snip off this connection, this connection, this connection. I don't think I like them here, but we'll run it off in this direction. That way that can power that. And then, of course, that's going to be up in the ceiling. Uh, so some of the stuff that's that's noticeable right now won't necessarily be as noticeable once everything's all in, but it still feels extremely cluttered. I, I swear I never leave enough space, I don't feel like. Uh, this, I'll run power to this here in just a minute. I'm just going to run it off of this, either with chain drives or something. Uh, but what we're going to do is let's... Right here, we're going to put in our spout. And generally, this can only... Ooh, I'm, getting, I'm going to have to go get lava. Generally, this can only accept from pipes. This is going to have to be sort of temporarily set up for now. Uh, because we don't have lava automated, we're kind of going to have to jumpstart the system a lot. Okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves a mechanical pump. So I guess we're actually going to have the lava system on the floor above this for right now um yeah for right now we'll just do we're gonna say you're gonna be pulling downwards uh as far as connecting this up this this part's gonna be pretty temporary uh, because like i said we will be Uh, changing this up quite a bit once we get our automatic lava in place but that won't be this episode and then we can go ahead and put our basic fluid tank there and it's going to start pulling that from there and sending it down into the spout okay so now at this point at this point let's go ahead and apply a little bit of redstone to this system Uh, actually, I don't think it'll feed in without redstone dust. Underflower redstone. It's not getting sugar. Why are you not getting sugar? Oh, it's sending it... It's sending it to this mechanical belt. Well, that's an easy fix. But it should be able to... They should be able to drop up to two blocks, but uh, it could have to do with the belt being right on top of it. That's a possibility. So we'll just set it up here. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to empty that out. And now, if we hit the us... Yeah, it just actually just made a blaze cake. Like <laughs> It's insanely fast. Like, boom, there we go. You can see it pour, and it shoots it off. Okay. So that is working. And actually, I think I like it laid out like that more anyways. I think our next create systems, I'm going to try to space them out more. I always try to. I'm like, oh, this is a lot of space. But then I'm like, oh, I want to add this and this and this. And then I end up with this, like, big monstrosity of a structure. You know. All right, so there is our two blaze cakes. Can we eat these? No. <laughs> it's like, do they count as a new food? Another food? All right, so we're going to go ahead and slot in blaze cakes there. And then we're going to put blaze cakes into our corporea crystal cube. So it's going to say, hey, I've got two. 
And then let's go get ourselves an analog lever. Now I'm not going to need a ton of these things stocked. Uh, I don't, are they used for anything outside of just as a fuel? No, but they're going to be fueling a few things. We probably won't have all of this mixing in this one spot. Well, actually, long term, yeah, we could. Uh, because we're going to be ma making some changes to things. And honestly, for right now, I think the... The Blaze Cake stuff could probably be manual input because it's not something that we're going to be like just pumping out, you know? So it might be like manual input, but this way we've got our Blaze Cakes made up and we'll probably just use this as our fuel just for everything related to charging this up because it's actually super cheap to make. It's just a little bit of setup to make. Uh, so we're going to... Let's remove this. Let's remove this. And we're going to say keep... 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 32, yeah, let's do 32. Now, how much sugar, I'm going to go ahead and just make up, yeah, I need to make up a bit of sugar before I start doing that. So keep me roughly 32, keep me roughly a half stack of blaze cakes, and then we'll just plug that up, and then, of course, this timer is going to activate it, and if we pop up here, every eight seconds really it could be a little bit faster for this but honestly i think a blaze cake every eight seconds should be sufficient for us those are done so we've got those and actually it looks like we've completed a few quests here uh i don't have a whole lot of space we might pop over there here in a moment though six blaze cakes probably about to be seven yeah there we go Okay, and really, since this only takes up this much space, and since we are going to have some conveyor belts across this, uh, on the back side, I'm going to go ahead and just fill this part in. And I will probably do a border around it, but then we'll have the glass on top, uh, and then you can look down and see the little redstone system down here, and I think that should be good. And then at this point, we're going to have to make ourselves some new alloys, because uh, we're going to be making ourselves a centrifugal separator. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and make ourselves some constant tan. And let me see how my plates are going. These should be done. We're going to be making plates a whole lot easier too here very, very soon. We could do it this episode, but I kind of want to push on to at least have the centrifuge to be like, hey, we got this. And I'm making invar. Wait a second. I needed more invar anyway, so it's not a big deal. Then at this point, we can get a big chunk of this craft it out let me go ahead and just slot that the aluminum fence aluminum wall mounts uh, the block of lead and we'll go ahead and get our turntable okay so there's our fluid cell frame and then to upgrade this basically all we're going to be missing is the cured rubber i've got to make up a little bit of cured rubber and we are going to be automating rubber here very very soon like in the next couple of episodes soon uh, because it does tie into pretty much everything related to fluids but for that, we want all this set up in place because it's actually going to produce us power. It's going to produce us a lot of really key resources for expanding. We're also going to be automating plates and just different things like that. Uh, so it's just a little bit easier to go ahead and do this first and then kind of come back and hit up rubber uh, after that. I didn't realize how cheap XNet was in this pack. Okay, there's our fluid sale. There is our centrifugal separator. So now at this point, what we can do is we can grab some of our sooty honeycombs, and these will be, we'll get these automated soon, you know. Uh, but we're going to put these in there. We're going to hold, uh, wait a second. Oh, actually, we need uh, bottles. We're going to hold shift right click. And we're basically just going to process these down. Uh, that should be plenty. We got a few bitumen chunks. That's the main thing that we need uh, at the moment. Uh, I'll just leave that stuff there for right now. Okay, now for our very first ones, I'm just going to process these over here. We will be setting up power uh, probably next episode because I do think this is going to end up being a couple episodes. To set all this up, like I said, it's a pretty big setup. But uh, we did get all the create stuff. The initial create stuff in place today so that's actually a really big deal for us all right so we'll put the centrifugal separator in right there and if we take our bitumen chunks and we throw them in you are now out of power there we go 
That's fine. You got enough to run. We're going to get our very first bits of tar. Now, to actually make this, we're going to need two pieces of tar. Let's go ahead. We can always, uh, yeah, let me actually, just to give this a little bit more power. Try to, try to survive with our little bit of power for right now. There's our two tar. All right, and then we can take, which this isn't set up for automation just yet. That's fine. We're going to take our silicon, our tar, our sand. We're going to throw all this into the basin. We're going to take one of our blaze cakes. And bear in mind that you can just click on the corporeal crystal cubes to pull items out. Uh, I'm just not doing it for this because I've got the drawer right there and I've got that under glass now. But we're going to go ahead, superheat that, and there we go. Only crafting one craft, it kind of wastes the blaze cake to some degree because this thing does last a while, but that's okay. There is our dielectric paste. Oh, and actually, I set these deployers up a little bit too high. Uh, let's fix that real quick. Honestly, I may change some of this over to gear shafts. This area here is probably going to get reorganized. Honestly, I don't even know that we're going to keep this here long term, but for the short term, it's convenient, you know. Uh, but we will actually probably end up changing this a little bit uh, as far as placement because we're going to have a lot of other sequence assembly and there's a part of me that thinks we might just run it all through a single system uh, and have things kind of filtered through as it goes or we might do multiple systems i don't know i feel like because i think we're going to be using it a bit within this pack so i feel like Multiple systems might be the best route. Uh, I need another mechanical belt to do it this way. Uh, so this area, it may change or it may get removed and just have like plate automation and things over here and then sequence assembly get set up somewhere else. I imagine we're going to have quite a few create rooms as we progress because I already want to build a big smelting system. So that's kind of on our to-do list. There we go. Uh, and now if we take our copper plates, we put those into there, it's going to stop this from moving for a minute. We take our dialectic paste, we throw that in there, it's going to stop that from moving. And now at this point, if we take and we put in, let's do these one at a time so you can see it. We put that in, it's going to come down the line. There we go. And I actually, I need this. Thank you. It's basically going to apply the copper plate and then the dielectric paste uh, onto there and then at this point we're going to go ahead and put our circuit back plane onto this about to have a server restart that's fine we'll go ahead and put this in and now you can see it gets collected into the chest so now all we have to do is come over here and put the items in oh i actually love that conversion that's really really nice for us okay i'll be back here in just a second and then at this point we can go ahead and take our cold coke dust and four iron ingots throw them into the mixer and we are going to have to superheat this because we're making steel through the mixer but we can get four ingots for one cold coke because right now we can't actually produce cold coke on our own but we do have some leftover from immersive engineering buildings i think uh, but there is our centrifuge so this way we can start using rf to convert honeycombs instead of having to do it manually because it's not really realistic for us to process combs and do anything with bays, really. It's like really seriously with a manual centrifuge. So that is the first step in our path, is getting the centrifuge. Now, I will probably end up making a few more of these uh, because, of course, centrifuges, they're not going to be able to run blocks of honeycombs. So we're going to have to be running singles. I'd like to have at least nine bees running. I'm going to kind of pick and choose which bees we're going to be running. So we're going to kind of have to play it a little bit carefully because these things aren't the fastest things in the world, but that's okay. Uh, later on, once we start getting Pneumatocraft set up, we can actually push onto the big centrifuges, but we do have to push onto Pneumatocraft for that. But luckily, these centrifuges are actually extremely easy to scale out as long as we have the setup for it. Because we have lots of dialectic paste right now, it's not expensive to make more. We have blaze cakes being stocked. You know, we have everything set up and in place to make more very, very easily. We will, next episode, be setting up a centrifuge or a few centrifuges for automation from our bays. And then using that, we're gonna be able to start setting up for kind of the bulk of the setup. Because the bays are actually going to be powering mob 
farming. Uh, they're going to be powering lava generation. They're going to be powering uh, RF power. They're going to be powering because I don't want to stay with our little our little single dynamo for longer than we have to. So we're going to be pushing on past that. Uh, they're going to be powering resources, you know, resources coming in. Just a lot of stuff that's going to be uh, kind of tied to our bees and our initial bee setup. So, and this is going to be kind of springboarding us into tech, sort of. Though we will be, in, after this setup, we will be going over and doing a little bit of blood magic uh, and getting our corporeal requester, giving it the ability to actually request things. And then I want to set up mana generation for Batania, and then we'll probably come back over to tech. Because we're a little bit behind on tech, so I do want to kind of start pushing that forward just a little bit. Uh, and starting to kind of automate a lot of things as we go, just to make our lives a little bit easier. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.